Hello, my name is Edwin, and I am recording this wire harness wire viz tutorial for RespiraWorks. Um, if you're joining us from elsewhere, RespiraWorks is a 501c3 nonprofit developing open source and freely licensed ventilators and respirators. Uh, if you're interested, you can find us at respira.works. Uh, you can donate or join our team or uh, just see what we're about uh, here on this website. So uh, come visit us. So today what I want to do is uh, walk through the process for designing a wire harness, um, producing the documentation for that wire harness, and then getting that work uploaded to Git, uh, uh, to our GitHub, um, and the process of getting that design reviewed, submitted, and merged back into the main branch. Um, so we're going to walk through this together today. Uh, we'll, we'll be um, creating the blower harness. Um, and I'm just going to record this process from beginning to end. Uh, I'm on a computer here that was just freshly uh, wiped and uh, given a brand new install of Windows. Um, and uh, if in a previous tutorial, we recorded the process of getting Git set up on this computer completely fresh. Um, and you'll find that link. Uh, once it's uploaded down uh, in the description of this video below. Um, so go check that out if you haven't uh, installed and set up Git yet. Um, and then we'll just go from there in this video and uh, go through the whole process. So uh, if you follow along in this video uh, and in designing your own harness, uh, by the time we go through all of these steps, you'll have created a branch for the new harness on GitHub. Uh, you'll have edited the files, uh, created new files, uh, everything you need to define the harness and its documentation. Um, you will generate the documentation uh, and uh, be able to create a pull request, which is how you submit your work for approval and then eventually merging back into uh, the main branch of the project. So first, we're going to go to the RespiraWorks GitHub page, go to the ventilator repo here, um, and pull up the issue for this, uh, for this harness. So most of the tasks that we do here at RespiraWorks are defined by, um, by issues, and we'll find the information we need to uh, design this harness there. So let me just go ahead and pull up the electrical label. Um, and let's go to electrical and priority. And here we'll find our harness tasks. So we're working on the blower harness today. Okay, and uh, here we have listed the parts we're going to need. Um, and uh, tickets uh, or uh, links to data sheets and other resources. Uh, information that we'll need to design this. And one of the useful things here is a link to the GitHub uh, wiki tutorial. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And you can also find this by going to our ventilator repository, clicking on wiki, and then clicking on desire, designing wire harnesses with wire viz. So let's go through the step by step. This is a uh, brand new install of Windows on this computer. So um, we're going to go through everything, including installing the software. Um, so first, let's start by installing Python. We'll go to this link here. Oops, just got to wait for the zoom bar to retract up here at the top of the screen. Here we go. Okay, we'll download Python for Windows and install it. That's just the first step of the tutorial. We download it. No, let's see. Let's try that again. Okay, now now we've downloaded it. Um, so I'll go ahead and open that file.
Okay, just a moment while it finishes installing. And so uh, Wireviz is built on top of Python. So uh, Python is one of the things we need to install to uh, let Wireviz run. And just a quick introduction on Wireviz. Wireviz is a piece of software that allows you to define wiring harnesses completely in a text editor. So um, by uh, writing essentially what is a markup language, you can uh, design hardware uh, electrical harnesses. And we'll see how that works uh, in this tutorial. Okay. Um, disable path length limit, that's a good idea. So we'll go ahead and enable that. Okay, and now we're done with the installation. Let's go back to the tutorial on Wiki. Um, the next step is to install GraphViz. So we'll go ahead and open that up. Okay, so um, this is a 64-bit computer. If you're not sure what type of computer you have, you can go right-click on your start menu, click system, and here it will tell you your system type. And in this case, this is a 64-bit computer, 64-bit operating system. So we'll go ahead and get the 64-bit option for GraphViz. Okay, and we're, we'll go ahead and open this um, installer that we've just downloaded. Okay, and start the installer. Um, one of the things we need to do is add GraphViz to our system path. This allows the computer to find the um, to find the program when you run a command. So um, we'll tell it to add GraphViz to the system path for all users. We'll go ahead and install in the default location. And finish that setup. Okay, back to the tutorial. So here we now need to ensure that both Python and GraphViz are in the system path variable. So what that means is um, we need to go to settings on our computer. And if you search for environment variable, edit the system environment variables. And environment variables is this button down here. And we're looking for the path variable. So let's go ahead and edit that. Um, and we see that uh, we have, doesn't look like we have either GraphViz or um, Python in here. So what we need to do is quick Google search how to do that. And Python to path. Just go ahead. This is Windows 10. So I'll just look that up really quick. Uh, okay, this website is just a scam. Let's try this one. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and find our Python path. So I'll open up Windows Explorer. So it would be something like, uh, let's see, commonly it's 
users app data. So it's my user app data and local programs Python. Okay, there's our Python executable here. So we just need that, the address of this folder. And we're gonna add that to our system path. Okay, add a new line and put Python in there. Okay, now let's see, add graph this to path. Okay, so we just need to know where it is. So that should be, it looks like it's in the program uh, programs folder. So let's go here. Either, either this, here we go, graph viz and bin for binary. That's where the executables are. So we're gonna go ahead and get that address and add it to our system path. Okay, there we go. So now we've added those both to the path. If we hit edit here, we can see that we have the Python um, and the graph viz path added to our system variables. That will allow the computer to run, um, <clears throat> to run those commands from anywhere on the computer. You don't need to be in the folder to run it. And this makes everything more convenient. <clears throat> okay, back to our tutorial. So uh, we've done this, it's in the path. Now let's open a command prompt. Windows menu, CMD, opens a command prompt. And we're gonna run these two um, commands. So pip, oops, pip3, install wireviz. Uh, okay, so it looks like we need another, um, we need another entry in our path variable. So let's see what we need here. So users, and your username, app data, local, and oh. where's that? looking for that Python uh, folder again. So I'll also just type in environment variables and open it that way. So let's go look at our environment variables and our path. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, local programs, oh, I see. Okay, local and programs Python. Um, I think we may also need the scripts. Yes, we need the scripts folder as well. So let's add that to our um, environment variable. So we'll add a new entry and put in the scripts folder as well. And just a quick edit here to the wiki. Sure, Python, Python slash scripts and graph is our your system path variable. Okay, great. So we'll just save that change. Add Python scripts folder to path. Okay, save that. So now our wiki should be up to date, All right? So Python scripts folder is now in our system variable. We'll just check that one more time. And it is, okay. Great. Now let's go ahead and run pip3, install, wire 
I might need to close and open this again. CMD for a command prompt. Three install virus. And there it goes. Okay. The next step is to install Pandas, which is another um, it's another dependency that uh, Wireviz requires to run. So we'll do that. Pip three, install Pandas. So while that installs, I'll just talk a little bit about Linux. Uh, so in order to, we, we have a optional, um, an optional step here, and we're actually not gonna do that in this tutorial here. We're going to record another tutorial separately for installing Linux because it's useful for different things, uh, not just for um, wire harnesses. Uh, but this is optional for designing wire harnesses. We have a set of documentation checking tools that allow you to build the documentation locally and check that everything works all together. Uh, and in order to run those tools, you need to run them in Linux. And so there is a way to install Windows on Linux. We'll record that in a separate tutorial, but we don't need that right now. Um, so we're going to skip this step here um, and we'll put a link to that tutorial uh, once we upload it uh, down in the description of these videos. Okay, so while that installs in the background, I'm gonna, uh, we'll talk about the Git workflow. So uh, here at RespiraWorks, we use a branch workflow. So if you go to, again, going to our GitHub page, going to the RespiraWorks ventilator, and going to the wiki, we can see the GitHub workflow here. So what that means is we branch out from master. So we create uh, a separate copy of the repository to work on. We'll, we'll implement one change. So we, we try to do only one thing on each, um, on each branch just to, to keep things organized. Um, and in this case, we'll be building this uh, blower harness. So uh, if needed, We'll sync the branch, rebase um, if, if it gets out of sync with the rest of the project. And that's something that um, we can do at the PR time. Um, we, can, uh, we can get help with that. So um, don't worry about that. If you're not familiar with rebasing, one of the admins uh, at RespiraWorks can help you with that. And we'll do that as part of the, um, as part of the design review. Um, and we have rules that you can't merge until this is done. So don't worry about not being able to do this correctly. Um, uh, one of us will be able to help you. Um, then we'll make a pull request. Uh, and that formally starts the procedure of integrating our work into the main project. Um, and we're going to go through all of this. We'll do this all together here in the tutorial. Uh, so let's see if we're done installing. We are. OK, great. So. Um, the first step is to create a new branch for our uh, our work today, which is designing this uh, blower wire harness. Uh, so you'll recall from the uh, from the tutorial that, uh, or sorry, from the from the Git tutorial that will will work in Git Bash. Um, so we just open up any folder. Um, in fact, actually, I'll just start from my users folder here. And we have our uh, ventilator repository, which we cloned earlier. So we'll open up a git bash here. And um, what can also be useful is, again, in our GitHub wiki, we have a git cheat sheet, where if you're looking for the right command to use in git, uh, that's a good place to start. So we'll go to our wiki again and open the git cheat sheet. Here it is. OK, 
Okay, and in this case, we're going to be making a new branch, um, which is git checkout dash b and the name of the new branch. So we're in the ventilator folder here, and we're going to do a git checkout dash b and the new um, the new branch name. Um, so usually I like to put in my uh, username and then a branch uh, name, and we typically name our branches according to the ticket that we're working on. So here uh, we'll call this um, issue 1289 and a short descriptive name of what we're doing. So um, this will be lower harness, okay? Yes, issue 1289. Okay, and then uh, the next step here is to do a git push. And I think if we, and this is all uh, contained in the git cheat sheet. So if we go back to the git cheat sheet and we look here, um, is create a new branch and switch to it. Um, the next step is to do a git pull. Um, so we'll actually we'll do the git pull first. Oops. Okay, and there it goes. So we're up to date. Okay, and then we'll do a good git push um, so, uh, to put this to the server. Now, because this is a new branch, uh, we know that it's going to complain about this, but what it will do is it'll give us the right um, the right command to use. And, and that's also documented here in the git cheat sheet. So if we do a git push, it's going to tell us, hey, we have a new branch. We actually need this longer um, command, but we can just copy and paste that. Okay. And there it goes. Um, so now we've set that up uh, online as well. So uh, that is both in our local machine and in GitHub on our, um, in the cloud. So, oops. So if we go here and look at our branches, we'll see that the blower harness branch now exists online as well. And so now we are set up to uh, commit changes to this branch. Okay, going back to our wire harness tutorial, we'll need to gather our information and create parts in the parts directory. So uh, let's see. Find part numbers, data sheets, and pinouts. Uh, we have that in our ticket here. You should ticket. Um, intended connectivity. So um, this will be which pins connect to what. Um, and then for each connector, terminal, wire, or crim contact, check if that part number exists in the master docs purchasing parts.json file. So let's go ahead and find that file in our repository here. Docs purchasing uh, parts.json. And remember from the Git tutorial, we installed Notepad++ as a text editor. So you can just right click and say edit with Notepad++. Uh, if you don't have that, go ahead and install it or um, use whatever your preferred text editor is, but Notepad++ works very well. Um, so let's look at our parts. So we're gonna need this Megafit two by one and a Molex Microfit one by four. Uh, so let's, let's look in here. I'm just gonna use a control F to search for two by one. Look like we have a two by one and one by four. We have neither of those. So just scrolling through here, looking at our parts list, it doesn't look like we have it. Um, yeah, so um, in this case, uh, so this, this, is, this is what each part entry looks like. Um, and in this case, what we're gonna do is just copy 
one of the previous part entries and just update it to create a new part. Copy and paste. So in this case, we're going to call this an uh, EC for uh, electrical connector. That's how we uh, pick our uh, part name. So this is a RespiraWorks uh, specific part number, EC Mega 2. And this is going to be a two by one. And actually, uh, to be specific in this, um, in this part number, we're going to give it this num number two by one. Um, that's because uh, there are two different kinds of megafit connector that have two connections. So there's the two by one and the one by two, and those have different um, different configurations, horizontal versus vertical. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give that a uh, specific name here. And let's find that part. So I'm going to look for it on DigiKey to get the part number. Megafit. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Megafit search. Okay, this is a rectangular connector housing is what we're looking for. Okay. And number of positions is two and number of rows is two because it's a two by one connector. So generally there are a few different options here and um, I like to sort by quantity just to see what the what the popular options are because those are usually the most typical ones. Um, and looks like a few uh, connectors that have more than two positions have uh, have snuck in here. Um, but we can look at the image here um, to find the right um, to find the right one. And so this one here, this is our megafit two by one. And if you have any questions about the right connector, just feel free to ask one of us. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the part number here and transfer that to our part list. MPN stands for manufacturer part number. The price, 47 cents. And a supplier part number, this one from, and this one we'll just use DigiKey for this one as well. And update that, um, the price, and we'll get the web link as well. And we'll just replace that there. Okay, now we've created a new uh, part in the system. Let's see what other parts we'll need for this. We also need the microfit one by four Make a fit. Rectangular connector housings. Four positions and one row. Sort by quantity. Yes, and that looks correct. So first I'm going to make a copy of that entry. So we'll make a new entry. For this one, so this is a Let's see. Let's see what we've called these in the past. Try to keep 
you can enter anything here, um, but we do like to keep um, we we do like to keep the naming consistent. So we're gonna we'll just go ahead and call this a EC micro one by four. This looks like it's this is the first micro fit that we've put in here. Okay. get that part number. And the supplier part number. The price, 62 cents. and the web address. Okay, just a quick look over that to make sure that all makes sense. Okay, and then in this case, we'll also need to create a part number, uh, a part reference for the blower. Let's see. Um, just going to check the documentation here. So I'm going back to GitHub and the ventilator repository. I'm going to look at our documentation here. Parts. So, parts numbering schema. Here we go. Electrical. Um, so it looks like our actual electrical parts, we're going to call EE. Okay. <clears throat> Let's call this EE. And it's going to be the TK. This is the blower. And the type is TK fan. This is a 12 volt blower and our part, the part number is listed in the issue ticket here. It's made by TK fan, part number is here. Let's see, so uh, price in this case, we'll just make this an estimate, but $35. We get these directly from TK Fan. Same part number. And I don't know that we have a link for this, but let's just do a quick search for it. So we can just use this link. There's our, there's our blower here. If you don't have a link, you can just leave this blank. Um, but in this case, we do have a link for this blower. Okay, we'll go ahead and save this file. And now we've updated the, um, <clears throat> we've updated this, uh, this file. Uh, so if we go back to our git bash and we type in git status, we can actually see that this file has been edited. And uh, it's generally good uh, whenever you make changes, kind of step by step, to commit your changes as you go. That means that if you, um, if you do something that you don't intend to or you want to roll back one of your changes, if you commit regularly, it's easy to roll back just one of those changes instead of a bunch of them at a time. It's just kind of like a useful undo. Um, so in this case, since we've done that first step, I'm gonna do a git commit. And we have requirement in our repository that you must always have a message with each commit. So we're gonna add a dash M 
and a commit message in quotes here. So um, added parts to parts.json, okay. Let's see. Oh, uh, it has not staged this for commit. So let's go ahead and do git add um, docs. Uh, uh, docs purchasing parts JSON. Okay, and then we can just press up to go back to our old commands that we've entered before. So, and we're going to find that commit message and hit enter. And now uh, we've did a, a commit, and we can also do a git push, which will put push that. Um, push that change up to the cloud so that it's online too. So if something happens to your computer, that change is uh, safe online. Or if you wanna go work on this, um, continue your work on a different computer, then you can do a git pull on that computer and you'll have all of your work up to date. So um, that's one of the things it's, it's good to, um, to commit regularly. Okay, <laughs> so let's find the next step. Back to the... Uh, wire harnessing tutorial. So we've done this. Then we're gonna create a uh, harness name YAML text file. Um, and in this case, we'll actually, we'll, we'll copy one so that we have a template. So if we go back to our folder here, we are in uh, ventilator docs wiring, right? That's uh, this folder here. And um, we'll go ahead and just going to copy this YAML file. And give it a name. So this one is going to be the or harness. Okay. And we'll open this in, whoops. We'll open this in Notepad++ to edit it. And we'll see we have these three sections as described on the tutorial, connectors, cables, and connections. And we'll go through all three of these. So we'll start by defining the endpoints. So these are the ends of the wires. So in this case, um, the blower has pigtails. It has wires coming right out of it. So the blower is actually one end of the um, one end of the harness. In a different blower, there might be a connector on the blower and then a wire harness from there. So in that case, the endpoint would be the connector, not the blower, because it's where the cables go. But in this case, in this blower, the cables go straight to the blower. It, it looks like this. Um, okay, so. So in minimum, we're gonna enter the pin, uh, the part number, pin count, labels, and type. So we've got, we're gonna have two endpoints here um, and we're gonna use the same names that we defined here in the parts.json file. Um, or we actually have three endpoints because we have a blower and two connectors. So let's, let's make the blower the first endpoint, that'll be X1. So we'll start with that part name here. Okay, and the comments here um, are convenient, um, convenient reminders about what all of these things are. And the TK fan has um, four connections. So pin count is four. And let's go ahead and name the connections. So these are minus plus FG and PWM. We're getting that from the data sheet.
Okay. I'm going to give it a descriptive name. This is the TK and floor. And I'll just steal that part number again from the JSON file. Okay, there's no subtype here. Um, subtype is optional, so we'll go ahead and just delete that. Okay, manufacturer's TK fan. Um, and here we don't have any additional components. So this is, if you have a connector and you need a, a crimp, um, but we're, we're not going to, uh, we don't need that here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this. Okay. Now let's do the first connector, <clears throat> which is this Megafit two by one. That's our power connector for the blower. Okay, it's a two pin connector. And let's look at our schematic. So I actually don't have um, I don't have KiCad installed on this computer, um, but those of you working on electrical, you probably do have KiCad um, installed. So um, we'll look look at the uh, schematic on that side to determine the uh, pin connections. And if you need any help with that, uh, one of us at Rispier Works can also help you out. Um, I think what I'll do uh, just to make this easier um, is that in each of these uh, each of these tickets, I'll also list the um, I'll list the the pin assignments that will make things more convenient. But if we go to the schematic and look at the blower connections, we see that. Um, Pin one is ground and pin two is power. Uh, so we'll give these descriptive names. I think I would like to call this um, ground and plus 12 volts. Okay. Give this a descriptive name. Doesn't have to be the, the only thing that needs to be the same here is really the part number, um, but we can just use the same names here. Okay, and in this case, this, um, these Megafit connectors, we use um, pre-made cables. Um, so these are cables that have the crimp ends already attached to them. So instead of having crimps that we're gonna put in these wires, um, we're, going, we're going to use the cables, uh, the pre-made cables. And this is because the crimp, uh, the crimp device is, the crimper is actually quite expensive. And so um, just being able to use the pre-crimped cables for Megafit here, this one here, EW Pre2, um, these are just uh, uh, cheaper and easier. So under additional components, I'm gonna call out part number EW pre two and just copy over the names. Um, okay, and we need uh, one for every populated um, position. So later when we list the connections, WireViz is smart enough to know, hey, we're gonna connect to two, um, two of the positions on this connector and it will multiply that by the quantity. So this is quantity per position. So quantity one per position, the multiplier of populated here. OK, 
Okay. And okay, we have that endpoint uh, created. Just check really quick. Part number is correct. Four megafit two by one. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. We'll go ahead and I'm going to use this as a template, copy and paste. And we're going to call this X3. This is the third connector. That's that megafit four by one, or sorry, one by four that we defined here. Four pins. Descriptive name. And the part number. Okay, and then we're going to get the the crimps for this one as well. So let's look for the microfit crimp. So here we have EC microfit female crimp, uh, twenty by twenty to twenty four uh, gauge wire. So that'll be that'll be good for this one. So additional components, it's going to be this here. Part number. Descriptive name. And again, the quantity is one and the multiplier is populated. And uh, in this case, I think we're not, we're not gonna use all of the positions on here so that that will uh, be convenient. Um, let's look at the pinout and we're gonna get that. This is the side that goes into the PCB. So um, we're gonna look at the PCB schematic. Again, if you don't have access to the PCB schematic, uh, the pinout will be in the ticket, will be added to the ticket or you can ask um, one of the folks with access to KiCad to uh, look at that. And if you want to get access to KiCad, just follow the KiCad tutorial on our SpearWorks GitHub Wiki. Okay, so it looks like the connector positions are plus five volts, um, PWM signal, enable, and ground. Okay. Okay, now the next thing to uh, define are the cables. So in this case, um, the the cable itself is actually included with the um, with the <clears throat> with the blower. So um, I'm actually just going to say here okay. there are four cables here. Lower built in details. And uh, if this were a harness where you're supplying, we're supplying our own wire, you would actually just take one of the wire, um, some of the wires out of this, uh, out of this parts list or make your, or add your own to the parts list. But in this case, the wires are part of the, the blower. So I'm just going to say not applicable here. And, and the reason is we don't, we don't want the blower to show up twice in the bill of materials. So in this case, um, this is just, it's included with the blower. Okay. 
And these are 350 millimeters long. Uh, and they're 20 gauge. Okay, and the colors are, and there's a uh, WireViz has its own set of colors. So we can, there's a link here in the tutorial. Uh, so here we are in the tutorial, we've defined the endpoints and now we're going on to the, the wires. So uh, here we'll go to the WireViz syntax guide and look at the wire colors. Okay, great. And so it looks like the colors are black, red, yellow, and blue. So black being BK. Red, RD. Yellow. And blue, BU. Okay. So now we've defined the cable. Going back to our tutorial here. And now we need to define the connection. And so here we use the, um, it's basically an ordered list. So uh, this will be the first connection of endpoint X1 to the first wire in the cable um, to the fourth uh, connection in X2 in this example. Um, but we're gonna do our own connections here. So uh, going back to here, we wanna connect the, um, the power connector first. So that's X1, uh, the blower to X2, the power connector using cable W1. So let's see. Negative and positive are the first two. So in this case, we can use a list. So one and two, and we're using the black and the red wire here, one and two for the W1 as well. And then in X2, let's see, uh, pin one is ground and pin two is 12 volts. So that's correct as well. So this one happens to be in the same order, um, one and two. Then we just need to connect the PWM signal uh, here, that's pin four. So in X1, which is the blower, we've got pin four, um, and this is the blue wire, the fourth, connection in the cable. So that's number four as well, the blue. And on X, oh, and uh, sorry. So this is actually, this is not part of this connection because it's, um, it's only going to X2. So we're actually going to start another connection. Uh, let's just look at our wire viz again. Yeah, so do this connection here. The tab spacing is important in the YAML file, so uh, make sure that those align correctly. I'm just going to take a look. I just want to check the the syntax here. So let's let's look at the WireViz tutorial and look at multiple connections. I do believe there is that dash between each of the the sections, uh, uh, each of the each of the connection sets. So. Um, I just want to look at that really quick. Just check that. Yes, there is. So here you see that there's an extra dash between each set of connections. So in this case, uh, X1 is still the first endpoint. Um, we're still using W1 as the uh, as the cable, but the 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 other endpoint, the opposite endpoint, is um, X3. So each connection is basically two endpoints with a wire in the middle, right? And so in this case, we've got 
Um, in both of these cases, the blower is the, the starting point. We're using the same cable for both of them, but they're going to two different connectors, right? So in this case, we're gonna go pin four, like we did before. Again, the fourth wire here, and then an X2, uh, sorry, this one will be X3 now because we are connecting to this micro fit connector one by four. And we're going to the second pin, which is the PWM pin. Okay, and we'll, we'll actually have one wire, which is um, unconnected because the FG pin we don't use. Uh, and I think, I think that's a speed, um, I believe that FG pin is a, uh, is a speed, uh, like a tachometer signal. And I don't believe we use it. Let's see what the data sheet here says. Yeah, it's a tachometer output and, and we don't use that in our design. So we're gonna leave that one unconnected and we'll probably wanna make a note um, in, the, uh, in the instructions. So when we write up the instructions for how to build this harness, we'll probably wanna put a note there that says, hey, um, just, zip tie that off, put a heat shrink on it so it doesn't short anything. Um, so we'll just, just remember that uh, there. And because only one position here is populated in X3, um, it's going to, uh, when WireViz makes this, generates the documentation for this harness, um, it's gonna have the correct multiplier for the number of crimp pins that are required here. So that's, that's convenient. So I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and save this file. Going back to our tutorial. And now we're gonna check our work. So um, we're gonna to go to the ventilator docs wiring folder. Uh, command prompt here. Ventilator. wiring folder. Okay, and we're gonna run the command wireviz and our blower harness.yaml file. Okay, ah, and it says X3 is not in connectors. Let's see what happened there. So going back to our text editor here, Um, ah, so again, it's, it's the indentation. So indentation is important in, um, in YAML. So just make sure that, uh, these are all aligned. There we go. So it was just an indentation error here. I'm going to save that file and let's try it again. Okay. It didn't complain. So it looks like it ran. We're going to go back into that docs folder now in Explorer. Docs wiring. And here we can see um, the files it's generated. So um, blower harness.html will show us. So let me zoom out a bit on this page. There we go. So we can see the whole thing. So here it's, um, it's created this connection here. Um, between X1, the blower, um, W1, the wire, and these two connectors here, X2 and X3. Okay, so we'll look at the bill of materials here. So this is automatically generated. So um, here's just that uh, the wires that are coming off of the blower. Uh, we have one each of X2 and X3, the, the electrical connectors. Um, we've got the, uh, the TK fan here, the description here is wrong. So we've got to fix that. Um, and we have our crimp connections, one uh, crimp for X3 and for X2, we have the pre-crimped cable. So that's, that's correct. Um, so we just want to make a change here. The description for the blower is incorrect here. So going back to our file. Let's see here. Let's 
Um, let's actually, this is, it's missing a type. So I think if you put the type in uh, and there's no, there's no need for a subtype, a subtype here. Uh, there we go. And the type is going to be uh, TK fan 12 volt lower with pigtails. Okay. Is the add a comment there. So let's see if this fixes that. So we're going to go ahead and run WireViz again and refresh this page. Okay. Now, okay. Yep. Tiki fan blower with pigtails, four pins. Great. It's not actually a connector, but uh, that's okay. All right. Looking at the rest of that here. Ground, 12 volt connected to minus and plus, and then the PWM is connected to this cable. And uh, it calls out two of the number six, which is the pre-crimped cable, and one of the number five, which is the crimp contact for that connector. Okay. This looks good. We can look at the other files here, but they're basically the same thing um, that are in the HTML. So there's a there's a PNG image, which will look like that. Okay, and an SVG. And uh, bills of materials and things like that, same as what we see uh, here uh, in the HTML file. So that all looks good. Um, let's look at the next step of the tutorial. Okay, so now let's create the assembly documentation. So these are um, narrative instructions on how to build this thing. Um, so we're going to do the same thing, .rst. And I think in this case, we're also going to copy uh, one of the previous ones as a, um, as a template. That's good. Let's edit that in Notepad++. Okay, and I think all we need to do is change the names of the files. So, okay, so uh, before we do that, Let's, uh, we need to add ourselves to the uh, RS, index.rst table of contents. So it's important to remember to do that, otherwise the, the, um, the documentation files won't link up on the web. So let's go to index.rst. We're gonna edit that file. Add the lower harness. And actually, I think in this case, I'm just going to make a quick change here. Um, we want, uh, I think these are these are all harnesses. So uh, harness is actually going to be redundant. And I'm going to change the names of these files. Let me just go ahead and close the blower harness file here. And um, really just call it blower. That I think that makes more sense. So I'll close the uh, blower harness RST file as well. And uh, let's just go ahead and, and change all these names to blower. Let's see. Okay, and the RST. The rest of these files are generated. Um, all these files uh, like the HTML and PNG and SVG, those are all from um, WireViz and they will be uh, rendered automatically online. So 
we don't need to change these files. In fact, we won't even commit these files uh, because all of that is automatically generated by Wireviz um, online. So the, the only files here that we're really editing, the, the source files, are this RST, um, these two RST files, the YAML file and the JSON uh, parts.json file. Okay, so. So now it's just called blower and then that's gonna, um, that's gonna link up correctly now. So let's go back to the uh, RST file. We're gonna reopen this file. We'll open the YAML file too so that we have references. Okay, and then let's give it give it a name. Uh, nothing here needs to be changed except the, the name of the file. Same for the image, the PNG. Um, let's see what heat shrink options we have. So we're going to need some heat shrink here. Um, this is because we're using the pre uh, the pre pre crimped um, cable. So you're just going to have wires coming from both ends, one from the blower and one from the cable, and we're actually just going to need to connect them. Um, so we're going to add some descriptive information here about how to build it. Yeah, so three millimeter diameter is probably the right one for this. So we're going to use um, shrink three. So we're going to use a three millimeter heat shrink. Uh, we do need the Microfit three crimper. We don't need the KK crimper here. Um, and some wire strippers. Okay. Um, and soldering iron and solder, right? And uh, usually what you can also do um, is build this harness yourself, um, go through the process, uh, figure out all the steps that you need to build it so that you can write the instructions here. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna start by cutting the, um, well, okay, so we'll, we'll insert, uh, insert the two pre crimped mega fit wires into the if it two x one housing. Okay. Uh, the cable at a length of, and let's just say uh, 50 millimeters from the connector. Okay, uh, let's rip. Uh, let's say five millimeters of insulation from the end of the three wires. Okay. Now let's see. This so that we don't confuse ourselves. And this, this pound sign and the dot makes it a numbered list. Uh, and that'll be automatically generated by the documentation. Uh, so we're going to cut two pieces of three millimeter heat shrink. Let's see, 15 millimeters long. Slide the heat, the two pieces of heat drink onto the red and black 
wires of the blower. Okay, and then we're going to solder the red and black wires to the megafits. Megafit connector cables according to the diagram. Um, and we'll just put a little note here um, on how to read the connector. Um, and one on the megafit connector is indicated by a stripe on the connector body. So that's just a helpful tip there. Okay. I think actually here we can just steal We'll just uh, do this. Uh, okay, uh, slide the heat shrink over the soldered portion. Oh, hey, we actually missed something here. We need to strip, strip five millimeters of insulation from the end of the pre-crimped wires and from the ends of the red and black. Um, details of the blower. All right, there, that'll make it easier. Um, slide heat shrink over the soldered portion um, and use the <coughs> heat gun to shrink them in place. Okay. Now, uh, strip the insulation from the blue pigtail of the blower using the microfit crimp uh, contact as a guide for the length of insulation to strip. Um, using the microfit crimper, crimp the contact onto the end of the blue wire. Okay, that's good. Insert the contact and wire into the connector housing. And let's be specific here, the microfit connector housing according to the diagram. And that will tell people which, which pin to put it in, right? I think it's, uh, in this case, it's pin two. Um, That's uh, pin two. Okay. And so they'll look at the diagram for that. Okay. And actually, so we, one of the things we like to do is add a few extra pieces of um, heat shrink just to keep the cables all together. Um, and that's actually a good idea, especially because we have one cable here that's not connected. This will just keep everything tidy. So I'm actually going to add the five millimeter heat shrink back in. What we do is what we do is we just put this um, five millimeter heat shrink all along the cable at, at even spacing um, just to keep all of it uh, uh, held together. So the wires kind of don't go everywhere. It makes it more of a cable and less of like four loose wires. So let's do that.
Okay, good. And so we need to do this uh, before we've put anything on the cable. So this step here needs to go at the beginning. Yep, there it is. Okay, and this is not the set of two wires, but we'll thread them onto the entire bundle of four wires on the blower. Okay, and it's important that we don't shrink them yet. Um, Need that last part. Okay, so basically, we're going to take the blower, all the wires, thread the heat shrink on there, but not shrink them yet. And let's actually break this into two steps just to make it easier to read. And let's be specific here cut three pieces of the five millimeter heat shrink, 15 millimeters long each. Um, okay, uh, and then we'll thread, thread them on. Then we're gonna do the rest of these things. Um, okay, um, gentle pull test to confirm seating of the contacts, that's good. We're gonna keep that step. And we actually want this for the, the mega fit as well, so. Okay. We'll be specific again, distribute the five millimeter heat shrink evenly along the harness and shrink them with the heat gun. Right, and total price, this is, again, this is just sort of an estimate. Um, between all the connectors, the, the, the blower will be priced separately. So this is really just the, just the connectors and crimps. It, it just ends up being about $4. Um, but this is, this is just a loose estimate that doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so this all looks good. Let's go back to our, um, I'm gonna go back to, our uh, tutorial here. Um, so this is um, this is the optional step that we talked about before. Um, this requires Linux to do this. So uh, if you can't do this yourself, we're going to skip this step, um, put it, uh, commit our changes, push them to GitHub, uh, and then put them on a PR. And at that point, we can ask one of the other staff um, with access to Linux to run these tools to help us check the complete documentation. So that's the entire documentation system. Um, but uh, we don't we don't need to do that um, for the basic harness tutorial. Um, this this is the point where we'll ask someone else to do it. Um, if you want to be able to do it yourself, um, we'll have a future tutorial which explains how to install Linux and run these tools. All right. If you have access to Linux, you can just run this. Um, And that just involves running a number of, um, of bash scripts. Okay, so in this case, we're just gonna commit our changes. So we'll go back to our folder, can open up a bash window again, right click, get bash. Okay, and remember we'll need to add those files. So we're gonna, we're gonna uh, to stage them for commit. So we're gonna add blower.yml. Right, so we need the YML, the RST, and the JSON. Needs to be in the docs folder, purchasing. Okay. Do a commit. 
give it a message. Um, adding source files, whoops, source files for blower harness. Okay. Oh, we didn't make any changes to the uh, parts.json file, so it didn't need to um, didn't need to update anything there. So we're going to do a uh, git push now. And there it goes. Okay, yeah. So we did the added those files. We don't have any images in this case, so we didn't add this as well. But if you had images in, uh, in your uh, harness design, then uh, you would add and push those as well. So now we can go to our uh, pull request section on RespearWorks. And we can click new pull request. And under compare, we can find our um, blower harness here. So there's, there's actually a shortcut for this. If you go to, if you just pushed, um, I'll just show this really quick. If you just pushed a branch, um, oh, I actually don't see here. So, um, well, let's not worry about that shortcut. It's actually not, uh, not necessary. So we go to new pull request. And we can say compare and then find our blower harness. Sometimes there'll be a window up here. That's the, the shortcut is sometimes there'll be uh, an extra window if you just recently pushed a branch, it'll have a compare and pull request button. You can also click that, but this process will always work. So we're in um, the pull requests of the repo. We've selected the branch that we're working on and we're gonna say create pull request, right? And so let's, make a description here. Okay. And here we can say, it either updates or closes an issue. So this one will actually close the issue. So uh, that's issue 1289. And the reason we do this is when this PR gets approved and merged, it will automatically close that issue ticket. So by linking these together, um, using this closes statement, uh, that will, um, that will be connected. So let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and create the pull request. And then we can we can check these things off as we go. So um, let's look at the self-review. So let's look at files changed. Okay. Um, it's the JSON the blower and the YAML file. Um, this is unrelated. We shouldn't actually see any other files here. So uh, I'll need to take that out, but um, we shouldn't see any other files here. If you see other files here, uh, ask one of the admins for, um, for help because it looks like some other file got, uh, got changed. But it should just be the part, the files that you were working on. So we're not gonna check that one off. Uh, whoops, let's go back. Um, we, we're not going to check that off yet because this doesn't look uh, this doesn't yet look correct. Um, so let's see, documentation's been updated. Yes, uh, we followed the style guide. The new content is linked, right? Because uh, we added that that link to the documentation. Um, follows the contributor wiki. We followed the uh, Git process um, and the. Um, uh, and the WireVis tutorial. The PR has a descriptive name and let's tag a reviewer. Okay. 
Everything is metric and ISO where possible. Uh, mechanical doesn't really apply here. Um, features and constraints are named. In this case, these are our part numbers, lengths of wires, things like that. Um, imported parts are well named, source URL and properties. Yep, that's we did that in the JSON file. Um, and there's no screenshots or, or assembly photos here. Uh, but basically, what we've done now is we've uploaded our changes uh, in a PR and we've made it visible to a reviewer, right? So basically, we've um, we've created a harness. We've created the documentation required for the harness based on um, the schematic, the pinouts of the, of the parts. Uh, and now we've submitted that design for review. And one of uh, our staff at Respira Works will review the design, uh, make any comments, changes, uh, help if the files don't look correct. Um, and then once approved, it will get merged into, um, into the main branch. Okay, and uh, then congratulations. You have created a harness for our open source project. And that's it. We'll see you in a future tutorial. Thank you all.